We're going to now go back to assuming that preferences are monotonic, that is that more of both goods is always better, and study one other aspect of indifference curves, that is of contra lines of the utility function. So in this graph, I've got shirts on one axis and pairs of pants on the other, and we're going to assume the more shirts always makes the consumer better off, and more pants always makes the consumer better off. There are no limitations on closet space. You can always use another shirt or another pair of pants. Now let's suppose you start out near the lower left of the graph where perhaps the number of shirts is say 12, the number of pair of pants is 3. And suppose you move down. In other words, you take, let's say, one pair of pants away from this consumer. So instead of having three pairs of pants, he only has two pairs of pants. Now you can compensate him by giving him shirts. And again, the reason why we're talking about this is not because in the real world we're compensating him or not compensating him. We're trying to graph his contour lines of the utility function. We're trying to graph his indifference curves. And in order to graph that, we need to get him, we need to determine where he would be where we would need to take him to be back at the same level of utility as where we were at before. Because once we get another point that's at the same level of utility as the initial point, then we can draw a contour line between those two points. So, he started at the initial point and went down. He lost pairs of pants. We're going to have to increase his utility to compensate. The way to do that is to give him more shirts. Question, how many more shirts? Well, the idea is three pairs of pants is really not many pants. And if you take one of them away, that's that only leaves him with two pairs of pants. That's a pretty big decrease in utility, if I can use a cardinal term there. But even if you're not measuring this or, uh, cardinally, the idea is that this guy's going to have to be compensated quite a lot for taking away one of his only three pairs of pants. And the only way to compensate him in this graph is with shirts. So you're going to have to give him a whole lot of shirts in order to compensate for the decrease in, in, in pairs of pants. And therefore, the indifference curve is going to be fairly flat. How about if you started over here in the upper left-hand part of the graph? Maybe with only three shirts, but 12 pairs of pants. And now you take one of those shirts away, or even two of those shirts away. That's not going to make him happy. Now he has a very uh, lopsided wardrobe of very few shirts and tons of pants. You have to make him better off if you want to sketch the contour line, because his utility has gone down. The only way to make him better off is give him more pants. How many pants are you going to have to give him? The idea is you're going to have to give him a lot of pants because this has been a big decrease in utility and frankly a, a few pants isn't going to help him very much. It's true more pants always makes him better off but this guy needs to be uh, compensated a lot for taking away one or two of his, his three shirts. So you're going to have to give him lots of pairs of pants in order to compensate and therefore indifference curve here is going to be pretty steep. So the pattern that we get is in the upper left, the indifference curves are steep, and in the lower right, the indifference curves are flat. That leads to this kind of shape for indifference curves. And as you'll recall, in the mathematics part, we call that shape convex. So the idea here is that indifference curves are convex. Now indifference curves aren't always convex. They usually are because we usually are considering commodities like shirts and pairs of pants where the consumer wants some kind of even mixture between shirts and pairs of pants. It doesn't have to be one to one, it might be two to one or three to one. But extremes of having almost no shirts and tons of pants or vice versa are, are, are not going to be uh, very attracted to the consumer. What he wants is some kind of uh, some kind of even, not necessarily equal, but even uh, ratio between them. It's in fact rather difficult to think 
of an example where the consumer likes both goods but doesn't really want to mix them. Uh, here's, here's one example I could think of. Say wine on one axis and milk on the other axis. Now most people don't want to mix drinking wine and drinking milk. So you could have a consumer for whom more wine is always better and more milk is always better and therefore the indifference curves are going to be downward sloping just as we saw before but the indifference curves will have a concave shape where here mixing is worse or we should say mixing is bad another example I sometimes think of is let's say you like to read detective novels and the more time you have to read detective novels, the happier you are. So one commodity is reading one detective novel, and the second commodity is reading another detective model, uh, detective novel. You might not want to mix them because if you're reading two of them at the same time, sort of in the same day, you know, you spend 30 minutes reading one and 30 minutes reading the second, and then going back to reading the first, it can kind of get confusing. Who's who's who in these in these two different novels? And so that's an example where you'd prefer to just have one or just have the other but not be mixing the two. So that's another example I've thought about where mixing is worse. In general though mixing isn't worse and so indifference curves are going to have this this um, convex shape. There are other, there's another situation where indifference curves are linear they don't have to be parallel but they're linear, and and that's um, well. Let's see. Indifference curves can't cross. Maybe they actually. Maybe they do need to be parallel. Um, I I don't actually think indifference curves need to be linear. Indifference curves need to be parallel. But in any case, the point is you could have linear indifference curves, where you don't have mixing being either better or or worse. Uh, another kind of indifference curve that's that's sometimes considered is this sort. Here's x, here's y. An example would be right shoes and left shoes. So if you got two right shoes and two left shoes, you have a certain amount of utility. And then if you keep the number of left shoes at two, but you increase the number of right shoes to three, that doesn't help you at all because you still just have two pairs of shoes. This is called a Leontief utility function. In the example of shoes, the indifference curves look like this and their corners are all along a 45 degree line that's because you want the same number of right shoes and left shoes but there are other co commodities that you, where you could have L-shaped indifference curves where you're not along a 45 degree line because maybe you always want two of one units of one commodity for one unit of the other commodity so it doesn't have to be one one to one in other words it could look like this Suppose this is 2 and this is uh, oh, 04. So it's not a 45 degree line, but you still have Leontief preferences.